Hi, this video continues chapter 3 on, re on functions, and uh, this time we're going to do the date and time functions. All right, and again, just a quick reminder, this is from my book, Learning SQL on PostSQL. It's available at Amazon and at other stores, at least online, if not on their shelves. Uh, here's the PG admin, and again, I have uh, typed in the functions so that you don't have to watch me type. Um, over here in the scratch pad, I talked about what we're going to be doing. Current date, current time, current time stamp, age, interval, extract, and date part. So current time, current date, and current time stamp are ways to get the current values, like the date. So today is 2301131, last day of January. Uh, here's the current time. It is 12.14.54. And here's the current time stamp, which includes both date and time. So it has the date and the time all together there. So those are ways just to get the current uh, current time as according to your computer. All right, so age is a function that tells you the difference bet from the current time and date to the one that's given here. So say we wanted to know uh, how long each employee had worked at their current position. So I'm going to select employee key, position key, employee position start date. That's one hell of a column name. And we're going to use the age function on that date. And then again, from employee position. And what we get is the employee key, the position key, the current date, and they have been in their position for three years, 11 months, and 29 days. All right, and we have each of these, um, how long they've been there. All right, here's another an example, just to see how long has it been since the last donations. So here, for this uh, donation, it key. We probably should have put the person key in there too. But it's been two years and eight months since that donation. You know, and each one of these, they're all in the same range because of when I filled out the database. But uh, they've been two years and eight months. Here, if you want to know how old I am, I'm using my birth date. I have to cast it to a timestamp. And again, I'm using the age function. And you can see that I'm 67 years, eight months, and 22 days old. All right, interval is a function that you can use when you're adding and subtracting or even multiplying dates and times. The interval tells you what you're using in the date to do it. So for this instance, in the grant application, we could create a rule that every grant application has to be uh, reviewed within five days. So what I have is a grant application date plus interval five days as due. So when we run that, we'll see that here it is the 13th is the day, and here it's the 18th. 25th, 30th, 25th, 30th, 26th, uh, 31st, etc. It uh, adds five days to the current date. You can do it at the interval with other things, like if we had a mortgage that was due in 30 years, uh, we could do the current date, is uh, 2023 and it would be due in 2053 on the 31st of January. And you can do it with time. So here's one that just takes adds 30 minutes to the current time. So it is 1218 and uh, this is a subtraction to. So 30 minutes ago was 1148. All right, so interval is used when you are doing math with dates. There's also distinct, uh, well, extract year. We're going to look at the years that donations were made. Extract is a function that removes a part from a date or time. So I'm going to extract a year, the year, and we get 20, 21, and 2020. Actually, if I do the order by it will put the 20, 21st. Notice I have to order by the whole function. 
Even if I aliased it, it usually won't order by the alias. So this is a year. This is where we're going to subtract the month. And I'm doing distinct so you don't have to see all of them. But notice that there's every month uh, there. So there have been uh, donations in every month. I, this is time. And I'm going to subtract what the current minutes are from the current time, just to show you that time also works. And it is currently, the minute is 19, 12, 19, 22. So extract is really useful. We'll use it more often, especially when we do aggregate functions. So we can see the totals per year, for instance. The last one here is uh, date part. Date part is almost the same as extract. Um, it is actually closer to what you would find in SQL Server or some other DBMS, and it may be there just for compatibility. Um, it does exactly the same thing as extract. I didn't um, order by, but I could have. I think that is all. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you is that you can also find most of this uh, in the documentation for Postgres SQL. Here's the date and time functions and operators, and it describes all these functions and a few more. All right, so that is the video. And the next video that I will do will be on string functions, and then we'll do the aggregate functions.